The supply chain is basically the backbone of WFP. On any one day, WFP supply chain has 5,750 trucks on the road, 92 aircraft flying and 20 ships on the high seas, providing assistance to 90 million people. WFP is constantly looking at innovative ways and efficient ways of trying to improve our supply chain. In terms of innovation, it's bringing in private sector that have a lot of experience and how can we do our job better as WFP using some of these innovations. And it's the spirit of being able to deliver against all odds. We should not stop as WFP, let anything get in our way. We partnered with Trademark East Africa, which is a non-profit organization that promotes trade across borders. And with their help, we've been able to achieve the authorized economic operator status. The authorized economic operator is a global scheme under the World Customs Organization. So what happens is that there is an evaluation of the company's performance. This is especially to do with complying with regulations and paying their due taxes as the goods move. What that means is that compliant companies then get to realize lower costs of business as a reward. So now trucks carrying WFP cargo will be moving easily through the borders and then that is a win-win for everybody. The consignments will be delivered faster, but then you also reduce the congestion at the border for the other users that are using the same facility. We witness truck literally flying through the border now compared to the long transit previously. That's the effect of the EO. We are really proud to be the first uh, UN agency to get this accreditation in Uganda. It takes two and a half to three days maximum from Mombasa to reach Tororo, you know, while previously it was going to four days, up to five days, depending on the situation on the border. Airship technology is relatively new and relatively new to WFP. What are the advantages of it? It basically gives us a lot more agility and flexibility and possibly on the cost side of it could lead to half of what we're paying today. It allows us to take off from a normal airport but it can land with possibly 20 tons in a swamp on the sea in a space of 100 metres by 100 metres. Today we're looking at a 20 ton version that could be ready by 2020. After that we're looking at a 90 ton version and the big game changer for us is the 500 ton version, which is basically a floating warehouse in the sky that we could have flying around and peeling off and doing deliveries where and if needed. So if we're in a flood situation, we have boats, we have Sherps, we have the big trucks that can arrive and we can deliver them by airship. If we can put the airships into operation, we also help reduce our carbon footprint. If we're looking at distributions today in WFP, a traditional refugee distribution, beneficiaries will line up, sometimes two hours in the sun, wait their scope recognition card, then they would receive their rations for the one month, try and carry 50 to 80 kilos home, depending on their family size, and maybe walk five kilometers home. What we're looking at is trying to improve the efficiency of that distribution. A food ATM literally is a vending machine where people that receive assistance can go with their card, can swipe the card and get the whole allocation or part of the allocation whenever they want. The distribution can be much more efficient and effective. They can come on Monday, the first day, they can take everything in one day if they want. The software register everything, but the end is checked, they get a slip as an evidence, this is the amount you took and this is the balance you have left. So it's just like they go shopping for the WFP slash World Vision items that are in the basket that we provide to them. Once we have set up that shop, the second phase is that we get the retail, the wholesale, the business in the area so that they will start taking over. What if we were able to convert a 40-foot container into a five-acre farm using hydroponics, which is resilient to the external environment. We have growing lights, we have heaters, we have coolers, and it's off-grid, so we have a solar system that runs it. It's got water that's coming from the air, so it's an atmospheric water generator, and we have eight times more growing cycles than you do in a normal farming practice with no harmful practices to the land. If we're able to achieve that in a remote community location, we take the whole supply chain out of the equation and we make that community so much more resilient to external environment factors. 
If we look corporately at WFP, if our budget is $7 billion, 60% of that is supply chain. WFP needs to keep its competitive edge. Today, there's a lot of technology that's out there and we could keep doing the same job that we've been doing for the past 20 to 40 years, or we can try and adapt and make ourselves more efficient and stay in the lead. We do need to think differently, act differently, and work together as a team, bringing private sector into the humanitarian work.